So Andy, I want to show you everything you need to know about Windows 8. Windows I, 8? Windows 8. It's the new version of Windows. I have to tell you, though, it's a little controversial. Controversy. Chip, I'm, I'm not com comfortable with controversy. But show me. Okay. Well, let's take a look and see if you still think it's controversial okay. after we're over. Controversy. When you start up Windows 8, you get this screen. This is called the lock screen. Right. Notice that there's really no buttons. There's no indication of what you're supposed to do next. So well, if you had to guess, what would you do? I would uh, put on a sweater because I see snow. Okay. That probably wouldn't help very much, but that's oh. okay. Okay. So what we can do to get past the lock screen is to either press any key or click anywhere. Okay. Ah, you can do that. And this takes us to the login screen. Okay. So this is my computer, but I'll let mm -hmm. you type in my password. But go ahead and press enter. All right. Good. Telling me that I'm welcome. Wow! Look at all the colors and things that that do things. It's it's a much easier place to start, mm -hmm. and a lot of people get very anxious at this point because it's so different from what Windows used to be. It's yes. nothing like what Windows used to look yes. like. I'm feeling anxiety. Right well, now. we'll go. We're but gonna you're here. We're, we're gonna relieve that anxiety. Okay, good. For starters, I want you to think of this, the Windows 8 start screen, just like the old start menu. So okay. It's where you go to find your programs. Okay. Um, and for example, let's say you want to start that program WordPad right there in the middle. Go ahead and click on that. All right. Daisies. Ah, there it is. WordPad is a classic application. It's been part of Windows for over 15 years. Mm -hmm. This version of WordPad is a little different. Now you'll notice that it's got the ribbon at the top, unlike the uh, old-fashioned menus. Mm -hmm. We saw the ribbon with Microsoft Office in 2007 and 2010. Um, it takes some getting used to, but it's a much more convenient way to access features. Mm -hmm. But that's not what I want to talk about right now. No. This looks a lot more like Windows 7, doesn't it? Yes, I was thinking. That looks like Windows 7. I, I knew you were thinking that. So this looks a lot like Windows 7. It can run any Windows 7 applications. Okay. But if you wanted to get back to the start screen, how would you do it? I'd say, go back to start screen. That, that, that it, didn't, it didn't work, it didn't no. do anything. So on Windows 7 and on uh, Windows Vista and Windows XP and Windows right. 2000 and Windows ME and Windows 98 Windows 95, there was a start button. Ah, uh, yeah, it's over, gone. Over in the left-hand corner, it's gone. But its memory remains. If I move my mouse into that lower left-hand corner, look what happens. Look at there, it's the start thing. And it looks like our start screen. It's mm -hmm. actually got the same layout and colors. Yeah, it does. Now, one of the things that's kind of a gotcha on this one, mm -hmm. a lot of people, they move the mouse into the corner, yes. and they start to move it back up to click on that button, but it went away. It did. You want to click when your mouse is in the corner. Mm. Strike while the iron is hot, as it were. As it were, or something like that. Right. So now we're back to our start screen, Okay. and I want you to start that program called Sticky Notes. Okay, Sticky Notes. And there's a Sticky Note. Again, this is just like the Windows 7 start menu. Mm -hmm. We have two classic Windows 7 programs, mm -hmm. albeit the new Windows 8 version of them, mm -hmm. up and running. Um, now I'm going to show you an easier way to get back to the start screen, okay. and, and that is just press the Windows key on the keyboard. Ah, okay. There it is. There it is, right back at the start screen. Mm -hmm. So now let's do something a little bit different. I want okay. you to click on that weather button. All right, weather button. This is a very different kind of application. Mm -hmm. Notice you don't see your Windows 7 taskbar. You don't see your background. You don't really see anything but the app, right? Right, and those clouds. And those clouds. Right. So this is called a Windows 8 style app. And you'll notice that it takes up the whole screen. Mm -hmm. um, it's very simple to use. There's no controls on here. There's no menus. Uh, there are things that we can do. We can see we have some arrows over here, so if I wanted to click and see a little further out, I could. Oh. There's a scroll bar over here that probably leads to something. Leads to, oh, look at there. Yeah. All kinds of extra Regional weather temperatures information. temperatures and satellites and their yellow lines. What Microsoft's trying to do with Windows 8 is they're trying to combine the best of both worlds mm -hmm. in traditional computers and tablets. You know, right. if you've got tablet computers like an iPad or an Android tablet. Right. I know a lot of people that I work with that would have their computer open and have their tablet open beside them. They use the tablets for simple things. Mm -hmm. They might use the computer for their more uh, heavy duty you know, word processing and spreadsheets and right. their business applications and that sure. sort of thing. Right. So with Windows 8, you get the best of both worlds. You it's get, all right there. You've got two different kinds of programs. You've got what they call Windows 8 style apps, mm -hmm. uh, also called Metro apps or modern apps because they've changed the name a Metro couple times. Modern. 
or Windows 8 style, or Windows Store style sometimes. Store style. There's a lot of names to remember. It's a lot of names. We'll just call them Windows 8 style apps. I like it. And then we have programs, traditional desktop programs. So there's a difference between apps and programs. I've always wanted to know the difference between apps and programs. Well, most of the time, they kind of mean the same thing. But uh -huh. for Windows 8, we'll refer to these as apps. Okay. And we'll refer to our traditional desktop programs as programs. So a couple of things you need to know. The traditional desktop applications, anything that will work with Windows 7, mm -hmm. will work in Windows 8. So if you've got any kind of business software, any special software that you use, if it works with Windows 7, it will work with Windows 8. That's good. And it will work here in the desktop. Okay. The Windows 8 style apps you buy from the Microsoft Store. Like when I buy an app for my phone. Exactly. It's just like buying from the uh, Apple App Store right. or the Google Play Store or the Amazon App Store. It's the same sort of thing. I see. In the store you'll see a lot of different apps. All of these are the Windows 8 style apps. Now, these apps, in a lot of cases, can work on not just a traditional computer. They can also work on a tablet that's running Windows 8. Mm -hmm. Some of them can work on a phone that's running Windows 8 as well. So wow. what Microsoft's trying to do is give you one experience across all your devices. So there's one application that exists both as an app and mm -hmm. also as a program, and that's Internet Explorer. Okay. If I click on Internet Explorer here, what I get is a web browser that's very much like the traditional Internet Explorer mm -hmm. but it's in a Windows app style so there's no menus uh, apart from what's on the web page itself wow. uh, if I wanted to type in a website to go somewhere else mm -hmm. I have to know how to do it yes right clicking with my mouse uh, on any open spot on the screen um. and that brings up these controls so I've got I can type in my website down here oh, okay there's your little URL mm -hmm. and it shows me ones that I've been to recently uh, I can also go to other open windows up here. Mm -hmm. So I can keep up to 10 windows open at a time on this one. Okay. But there are some websites that I just can't go to on this one because on the app side of things, mm -hmm. on the Windows 8 style apps, mm -hmm. they're a little more limited than a real desktop program. Oh. Uh, so for example, Here's a website that's very much Flash based. It's based mm -hmm. in Adobe Flash, mm -hmm. and you can see nothing comes up at all. There's nothing there. That's right. You wouldn't see it on your iPad either because oh. the iPad can't show Flash. That's sad. But Microsoft's given us a second Internet Explorer. Oh, how nice of them. So let's go back, and I'm going to go to my desktop. Right. And here's the traditional E for Internet Explorer. Right. And if I open this one, It'll open that website with no problem. Okay. So when you get stuck on a website, you can open it over here. And in fact, Microsoft has made that easy mm -hmm. by giving us this view on the desktop. Oh, button. that's great. And that'll take you over so there. So I don't have to retype it, or just click it there, and it opens up on the desktop. And it goes straight in. The other thing is the two Internet Explorers share bookmarks. So if you bookmark a website in one Internet Explorer, it'll show up in the other Internet Explorer. That's nice of them to share bookmarks. It is very nice of them That's to share. Nice of them. Speaking of sharing, yes. let me share a few more secrets you need to know to get around in Windows 8. It's good to share. So I've already showed you that if I mouse over the left-hand corner, right. I get my start menu. Right. If I mouse over the top left, it shows me in the most recently used application. Yeah. I can click on that, and that was the Internet Explorer we were in that didn't open. Right. So let me go back to my start menu. Okay. And I'm going to open my weather. Okay. And then I'll go I'll open my desktop. Mm. And now if I go up here, you'll see there's the weather. There's the weather. Get a little picture of it, click on it, and there we are back at the weather. So this is an easy way to go back to your previous app. Okay. If I want to switch from one program to another, I've got three choices. One option is to hold down the Windows key. Okay. And while you're holding it down, tap tab a few times. Oh, there it is. So that cycles through all of the open apps. So we had the weather app open earlier, mm -hmm. and it'll pop to that. Right. The one downside to using Windows tab is it only cycles between apps, not programs. Okay. Uh, so you don't see desktop programs. You will see one desktop Right. Uh, if the desktop is open. Mm -hmm. So if we go there, mm -hmm. and we have our Internet Explorer, we have mm -hmm. our WordPad, and I believe we also have Sticky Notes, Sticky notes. Uh, up back there. Mm -hmm. Another shortcut that we've used for years and years yes. is Alt-Tab. So try the same thing, but hold down the Alt button and press Tab. Tab. 
same sort of idea. Press it a few times, okay. but you'll notice now each desktop program has its own slot. So there's sticky notes, there's the plain background, cool. there's Internet Explorer, and there's yeah. WordPad. So when mm -hmm. you let go of Alt, it'll drop you off wherever you left. There we are. One last way you can change around is we looked at how to get to the Start button by mousing over the lower mm -hmm. left-hand corner yes. and clicking. Mm -hmm. That gets us to Start. Right. If I mouse over the top left corner, uh -huh. it shows me the most recently used app, mm -hmm. and you can see those little ghost images down there. Yes. If I mouse down, these are the other apps that are currently running. So right. I can just click on, let's say, the Microsoft Store, and it'll take me there. Okay. So that's an easy way to get around, too. Cool. One of the coolest things you can do, though, with Windows 8, mm -hmm. remember they want to combine the best of a tablet computer and a real computer. Right. Sometimes I want to be working in some real application, but I want to have something running on the side. Okay. Maybe it's weather. Maybe it's I'm listening to music. Maybe right. I'm getting my email or my Twitter or something like that. Mm -hmm. So let's say that I want to be in the desktop, okay. but I want to have the weather open on the side. Okay. I can open the weather, mm -hmm. and I can snap it to the left side or the right side. Snap? Yes, snap. Snap. So there's a couple of different ways to do it. My favorite way is to hold down the Windows key and press mm. the period. Okay. Kill. So when you do that, mm. notice what happened. It snapped the weather to the side. It also made it look different. So the weather app is smart. It knows that when it's on the side, it should show a little narrow version of its own information. Mm -hmm. um, now I've got to put something on the left-hand side, right. so I can browse over to start. Okay. And I'll choose my desktop. Mm -hmm. And now I've got my desktop open. I can be working in my regular applications and always right. have the weather open over here. Cool. So now let's try this. Okay. Hold down Windows and press period again. Okay. And it disappeared altogether. Press it one more time. Now it snapped to the left. Ah. And then press it again. Mm -hmm. Now it's full screen and the Windows desktop is gone minimized. Cool. And then one more time. Now it's full screen and one more time. Now the Windows desktop's minimized. You're just cycling through, so they're yeah. kind of swapping places. Cool. And now we're back where we were. Right. So thing, I can have the weather there or there. So if whether I bat left or right, the weather's in the correct place. Right. So the other way you can change it is click on this big bar, and you can drag back and forth to make one bigger and the other one smaller. Oh. Cool. Or to erase it all together. Mm -hmm. The other thing you can do to start it is if you move the mouse to the upper right, mm -hmm. you get an image of the most recently used app. Mm -hmm. If you right click on that, you can mm -hmm. choose snap left or snap right. So I'll snap right. left this time. Yep. There you go. So finally, one other way you can do it is mm -hmm. if you go to the app that you want to snap, yep. move the cursor up to the top. You'll see it turns into a little hand. Yes. If I take it and I drag it to the left, wow. it'll snap it to the left. If I take it and drag it to the right, it'll snap it to the right. And if I take it and drag it down, it'll close it. Whew. So a couple of other options there. Cool. So now let me show you the most important command you can know in Windows 8. The most important command. Yes. Sounds serious. Uh, it's very serious. It's called Charms. Charms. It's a very sweet name. It is. If you take your mouse and you move it to the lower right or to the upper right corner, you'll see these charms pop out. And if uh, you move the mouse cursor down towards them, they solidify. Solidify your charms. This is called the charms bar, and these five things are called charms. So the charms bar does a lot of important things for you. Uh, number one, it tells you what time it is. Good. Very handy. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is it gives you another way to get back to the start screen. So if I forgot to move to the lower left-hand corner, if yeah. I forgot to press the Windows key, mm -hmm. I can press this, and we normally go back to start. We were on start, so it went to the next application. I'll go back to Charms and back to start. Wow. The handiest thing to me, though, is search. Yeah. We click on search, and it's gonna it can search through any of our applications and our programs. Mm -hmm. It can search through any of our settings and it can search through any of our files. And those are the three things you see up here. I see. So let's say that we're looking for that app WordPad and WordPad. we can't find it anywhere in the list for some reason. Go ahead and type in Word or okay. WordPad. You can see as we start typing over on the left it starts to figure out oh, what we're is. looking for. Yeah. Click on it and it'll launch it. Oh. So let's go back to search. Okay. And let's say that we're looking for a setting. Like when I first started using mm -hmm. Windows 8, I couldn't find the power saving controls. Mm. So type in the word power. 
and there's all the settings that have anything to do with power. Yeah. And then finally, files. And notice that I can change what I'm searching without having to retype. Right. So if I wanted to find anything that had the word power in it, yeah. there they come. So there isn't files, settings, and apps. It'll just, just keep the same word. Yep. And if there's an app, oh, there's an app called PowerPoint and an app called PowerShell. How about them apples? I can also search inside other apps that mm -hmm. have search enabled. Mm -hmm. I, I found that's less helpful. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but if I wanted to, let's say, search power on Internet Explorer, mm -hmm. what it's going to do is it's going to open Internet Explorer and do a search on the Internet for the word power. There you go. So kind of helpful. Yeah. Let's go back to our charms bar and look at the rest of it. Now, the share function is something that lets two apps share information. So mm -hmm. if I want to send an email with a photo, if I want mm -hmm. to take a photo and tweet about it or something like that, right. um, it depends on both apps having that functionality. Mm -hmm. and, and I haven't found a lot of useful functions for it yet, but mm -hmm. it's there. Okay. Start we talked about. Devices is where you could configure devices that you can send information to. Right mm -hmm. now we don't have anything except mm -hmm. a second screen. Right. And then finally settings. The settings charm brings up the settings for whatever app you're in at the moment. Okay. So we're in the app section and all it has for us are tiles and help mm -hmm. plus these six things down here that never change. Watch what happens if I go somewhere else. Let's say that I go to the weather app. If I want to change the settings for my weather app, I go to the exact same place. Mm -hmm. I go to the charms bar. charms bar. I go to settings and here's the settings for my weather app. Okay. These six down at the bottom always stay the same. That's my network settings, my volume, my brightness control mm -hmm. if it's available. It's not available on this one. Mm -hmm. I can control how notifications are sent to me. Mm -hmm. I'll skip over that one. I can control my on-screen keyboard. That's especially useful if I have a touch screen. Right. And then finally, the power controls. A lot of users got confused because they couldn't find the power controls in Windows 8 to shut down the computer, to turn mm -hmm. it off. Mm -hmm. There they are. They're there. So you go to charms, go to settings, and there they are. Then finally there's this link that says change PC settings. Mm -hmm. And this is like a simplified version of the old control panel. Now the old control panel is still available and it mm -hmm. still has a lot more features than this does. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the things that most users need to change you're going to find here in PC settings. That's why these words are so big. Big and easy to use. Yeah, It's nice and good. friendly, isn't it? It is friendly. I feel very comfortable. Good, because usually when you go into settings, it's uh, it's you know overwhelming for some someone like myself. That's right. Well, and just so you know, if you needed to get to the old control panel and mm -hmm. all the administrative tools, mm -hmm. so mouse over the left hand corner when the start menu mm -hmm. comes up, right click, and here's all of your administrative tools, including the old control panel. Oh yeah. A lot of it's been improved for Windows 8, but if mm -hmm. you uh, you've used it before, you'll find it very familiar. So Andy, how do you feel about Windows 8 now? I feel really comfortable. I'm learning the difference between apps and programs, and, and it, the, the icons make it easy even to search through and, and, if I can't remember everything, guess my way through it. I like it a lot. That's right. So as long as you remember the Windows key gets you back to the start screen, right? and your charms are over here. Right. By the way, you can also press Windows plus C. And that brings up my charms. Exactly. So here's the important things to know. Mm -hmm. Windows 8 is actually very fast. It's very yes. stable. Okay. Um, it is very different. Mm -hmm. But most people, once they take a few minutes to get used to it, find they like it a lot better than Windows 7. I think I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.